I'm Matt with Meat Church. Welcome to my outdoor kitchen. Today, we're going to be making pulled pork. Well, Meat Church partners with Traeger Grills, and we're working together this year during National Barbecue Month to bring you guys three of my favorite proteins. Today, we're making pulled pork, but in this series, we're also doing brisket and we're doing beef ribs. So I thought what I would do today is bring in my longtime friend, Chad Ward, who is Director of Barbecue Marketing at Traeger. Come on in here, old yeah, boy. Yeah, old boy, I brought you a little something. How about that, oh, fella? How about that? Yeah. Chad's also pit master and owner of Whiskey Bent Barbecue. We've known each other for a really long time. It's actually his fault that I partnered with Traeger. He gave <laughs> me a Traeger years ago. Uh, we've been talking about working together for I don't know how long yep. on a video, and, it, and it's finally happened. Here we are. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're doing pulled pork today. Um, we've talked a little bit back and forth about what are our styles. We both used to compete a little bit. Now we focus kind of on the backyard. And what's your two cents on what you think we should do today? You know, to me, I think we just keep it simple. You know, 250 degrees. You know, the one thing about a pork butt, it's super resilient. When you're starting long smokes, it's a great place to start, in my opinion. Very forgiving. I agree. It's really hard to screw it up. Um, around here, people buy a Traeger and they want to jump into barbecue and i joke that people go straight to brisket and i'm like hold on put the training wheels on first but you know you can buy this for 20 something dollars and it's really really hard to screw up yeah and once you perfect this i think you're ready to move on to brisket in my opinion all right well we're going to keep this super simple today first thing we've got to do is we've got to trim it so let me let me just get a little, i'm just going to do a little bit of a light trim um, you know, anatomy of a pork butt, I'll show it off a little, and Chad, you can talk about it. We've got the money muscle over here. Uh, if we were competing, we would kind of expose that because our, our friend Myron says if, uh, if you want to get paid, that's what you got to turn yes, in. Yes, sir. But all I'm going to do is I just want to find any kind of errant fat and trim off. I'm not going to do a whole lot. Um, I may take off some kind of thicker stuff on the fat cap, mm -hmm. which there's not a lot here, and that's all I'm going to do. The other thing I say, too, is always make sure and run your hands over it. Sometimes... When they're butchering that, there'll be some bone shards that you obviously don't want uh, to get into the finished product. And I just know that occasionally on pork butt, you'll notice that. And I think that's where they separate right here at the joint. Some of those shards will end up getting in there, but not really simple trim. Yeah, I don't, I don't do a whole lot. I just kind of get the, like I said, the errant stuff kind of sticking off. Um, I always say fat's flavor, but in moderation. Mm -hmm. You know, so like right here where this is like a little too thick, you know, I'm going to take that off. I've, I leave this sometimes, um, and then depending on how I'm, how I'm cooking it. But the thing is, if you leave this fat cap on here, then uh, you can't get seasoning on the meat. Yep. And you know, when you take this fat off at the end, there goes all that seasoning. So I, I kind of, I want my seasoning to adhere to the meat so that I get that in my bite at the end. Absolutely, I completely agree. And one thing too, to remember, you know, we're gonna end up pulling this. You can always add a little bit of your seasoning back in to the pull too, if you want a little more pop. We're definitely gonna do that little finishing dust. Yes, sir. There at the end. Well, let's talk, while I'm finishing this up, I'm not gonna do much. Um, let's talk about seasoning. I'll tell you what I do, and then I know you're gonna jump in and tell us a bunch of flavor options, but Meat Church makes, we're, we're known for our seasoning, so you guys are gracious really? enough to let me use our stuff. And then, but I love Traeger stuff too, so we'll, we'll talk about that. But I like to put a binder on my pork. That's just something that I grew up on. Binders are optional. When I cook pork, I usually use mustard. Um, so I don't know how you feel about a binder, but we're going to go Whataburger mustard because you came to Texas. Man, there is nothing wrong with that. You ain't going to scare me with anything Whataburger. Love it. Uh, one I have used in the past on pork, and it worked out pretty well, is a pecan oil. Kind of gave it a little bit of nuttiness behind and a little bit of a uh, little darker color. But mustard's always kind of a great go-to. Super easy. Doesn't affect the flavor profile for anybody that's worried about that. Um, not only does it help the seasoning adhere to the meat, but it also helps the seasoning stay adhered during the cook. Um, which was one reason that I like to do it. I kind of went a little heavy there. And then, like I said, we're gonna talk about seasoning. So today we're gonna use my OG honey hog rub, which is a, it's an all purpose rub with honey powder in it. Uh, it's one of our most popular rubs. Uh, my kids love it. My 10 year old eats it straight out of the bottle, puts it on popcorn. And we're ultimately gonna put some of the hot in the wrap. We'll talk about that later, but I know you're the expert on some other flavors that we could be using for folks watching this video. Yeah, so for me, you know, on the trigger rubs, I've always liked the pork and poultry. Um, on a pork butt, it gives great color, a little bit of savory, a little bit of sweet. Uh, and then the perfect pork now also is just another great flavor. And if you want to go a little bit of layering, I always like just a straight up trigger rub with a little bit of the perfect pork. I think is great on a, on a pork butt. 
I go pretty heavy with my, yeah. this is a big piece of meat. I tell people it kind of reminds me of like a prime rib. It's basically impossible to over season this. Cause like you said, we're going to shred it in the end. Um, so it, it takes, I, I put a lot on here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you get good coverage. And, and plus, we want to have beautiful bark, too. We want to make sure we get plenty of nice color on there and texture. I'm going pretty heavy. All right. Well, I always say from here, I'm going to let the seasoning adhere. Uh, so I tell people, if you've got the time, you know, let this sit an hour. Or if you're doing barbecue on the weekend, do this on Friday night. Crack open a beer, do all this prep, throw it in the fridge, and just let it sit. But in this case, we're going to give it at least 15 minutes when this looks nice and wet, the seasoning is adhered. Uh, it has pulled all the moisture out of it, and we're good to go. So we're going to let this sit for 15 minutes, and we'll jump into cooking. Let's do it. Well, it's adhered. I might say it looks mighty sexy. That is a sexy-looking pork butt, old boy. Well, let's talk about cooking it. Uh, you know, for me, when I teach barbecue, I, you know, people are like 225, 250, 275. They all work. I kind of adapt recipes to how much time I have. Right. But I think one thing I've told you before is coming out of the comp world, guys in comp cook hot. A lot of guys do. And one time I thought, well, how hot can I cook and not lose quality? So sometimes I cook a lot of stuff at 275, which is what we did with this, yes. or what we're going to do with this. So Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and I think, too, like I always tell people, like the recipe is there as a guide. Don't feel like you got to follow every single yeah. step of it because you may be a little tight on time or you may have a lot of extra time. And based on yeah. that, you can always adjust the cooking cycle. Yeah, if you, you know, to jump ahead, we're going to end up wrapping this butt, but you don't have to. If you really wanted to get, like, epic bark, you could drop the temp down and you could just run, like, a no-wrap butt. Um, there's so many things that you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the Traeger. Um, we've got the, the ironwood running with hickory pellets um, at 275 degrees. Oh, I need a, I need a thermometer. And we need a thermometer. Yeah. Got the old meter here. Yes, sir. Insert back here. Just oh, hear the beep. Okay. And now it knows we're hooked up, and that's going to give us our, our temp and all the way throughout the cook, right? Well, that way I can watch it from my phone while I'm off yeah. chasing my dang kids. You want to open this up over I here? I think I can do it. There we go. You hand me another set of gloves. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got one here that's been cooking. We're going to talk about that. Here you go. So we've got another pork butt here that is at 165 degrees internal temperature. I can one hand this. One hand. Uh, look at that bark, man. It's got the meter in it here. Uh, so like I said, it's about 165. The time isn't like real important, but as a guide, this has been somewhere between five and six hours. It mm -hmm. was prepared the exact same way. And I'm looking for bark, which we have. And now I'm going to wrap in some goodness, uh, you know, just to add a depth of flavor. Well, and one thing to remember, too, is a lot of times, you know, internal temperature is great, but we're wrapping to color and bark because that's what we really care about. And this has already reached a point to where it's not going to take on any more smoke, you that's know, based right. on the internal temp. And I would say this is at 165, but I say wrap between 165, 175. A lot of times I like to let things go a little further to get more bark. I'm happy with this. Briskets I take further, uh, but time to wrap. So well, and, and especially if you're going to introduce any liquid, you know, into the wrap, a little heavier bark to start with isn't going to hurt you at all. Not at all, and that's what we're doing here today. We're going to go kind of simple. Um, what I'm going to do is add some really good butter, a touch of brown sugar, and then a little seasoning. So let's do the brown sugar first. I'm not doing a whole lot, but do what you want. You can get crazy here. You can put hot sauce. Um, a lot of people put good juices in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you like to wrap with. I, I've used, uh, for juice-wise, I've used a little peach nectar in the past. I've used a little Martinelli's apple juice, either one. Just get a little bit of braising liquid in the bottom, but butter and brown sugar, you can't beat that, and a little kinda, bit of seasoning. Kind of like good. a kind of like something we would do with ribs, I guess. I'm going to take this yeah. off, grab this. Very similar to like a comp rib wrap. I like to put a little rub in my wrap. This is my uh, Honey Hog Hot, which is the same as Honey Hog, but has a little jalapeno in it. And for anyone worried, it's not going to burn anybody out. My kids would eat this. It just will help us get a sweet heat, which is what I yep. love. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna put this one back in. Can I have that piece of fuel? Absolutely. So for me, from this point forward, this is gonna be quite simple. I'm cooking this until it's tender, which is gonna be just over 200 degrees. The good thing about pork is if you, it's really hard to screw up. If you yes. don't cook it long enough, it's gonna be too hard to pull. If you pulled it in the low 190s, if you cook it like 210, it's gonna start to just kind of get a little mushy, but they're, they're still good that yep. way. But Super easy. Yeah, I'm always looking for that 200 to 202 and somewhere in that range, and it's always turns out right. 
Well, back in the Traeger we go. No need to change the temperature unless the circumstances of your life dictate, I wanna drop it down to elongate the cook, or I wanna increase it to speed it up. I mean, you could blast this now if you needed to. So this yeah, is absolutely. the part where this, to me, this stage is now based on what you got going on in your life and when you want to eat. Absolutely, completely agree. And we're just gonna make this real easy. All right, look at here, look at here. I magically have one for you that's cooked to tender. Woo. I should be polite and wait on you, but I'm not going to. Go for it. Let's take a look-see here. Woo! Ooh, that, you immediately hit that smell. Yes, you get it for sure. It smells like a Memorial Day weekend down by the lake, right? Just good barbecue, smells delicious. Look, our, rat, our bark stayed nice and dark. Looks amazing. Yeah, it started to pop open here a little, but yep. that, that doesn't matter. Not at all. That's just that seam right there by the bone. Yeah, I didn't say up front, this was a bone-in pork butt, which is my preference to cook because it stays shaped. Yes. Boneless pork will just kind of lay down flat. So this is, when I'm doing pulled pork, this is my preference. But one little pro tip, if you ever do, I've had it happen before, said bone-in, got it home, it was boneless. You've got the game on the line, you still got to cook, take a little bit of butcher twine, try to tie it all back together so it's at least uniform. But you're, you're when so you have fancy. preference, bone-in always. Well, we need to let this cool off a little bit, and we've got another secret to tell you as we pull the pork at the end. So as this cools down, we'll be back. I'm ready to jump in. Man, why, what are we waiting on? Looks gorgeous, now it's time to pull it all up and do some tasting. You're gonna make me do all the dirty work here. Look at that smoke right there. Looks so that. good. Yeah. Good smoke ring, nice color. I'm gonna go straight in the money muscle. I'm not, Absolutely. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna pull it You can just pile that over here. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's got great, look, great bark on it. Really good. That. Yeah. And the nice thing about that bark is now it's going to work into every body your pulled pork, you know, and that's the thing. This is so versatile. You can use it for so many things. It feeds so many people. Yeah, I mean, you know, Traeger Day is coming up uh, May 20th, and uh, this is a great this is a great option to feed a crowd because there's so much stuff you can put it in. You know, uh, my kids like it on sliders. We put it on nachos. Uh, we're in Texas. We do a lot of tacos you know, stuff like that. But there's so many things you can put it on, sandwiches, you know, whatever. Or even if you want to go the easy way out, I've done this before, get you a cheese pizza, pop a little bit of pulled pork on it, slide in the Traeger, 15 minutes, 375, got a little pulled pork pizza. That's why you are the director of barbecue marketing. Great title. Brand. But uh, no, this this looks so good. Tell you what, I'm gonna leave some of this barkiness over here. Okay. Cause it looks good. Just show and, off a little bit. Yeah. But. You know, I like to eat the money muscle, as I mentioned. I like to everything around the bone. Uh, I like the bacon on the bottom, but we're just gonna mix all this together. I'm, we're, gonna, we're gonna hit everybody with a couple tips or, or a couple things that we like to do. I'm gonna start out with the first one. You can hit them with the second one. Yes, sir. So we took 100% of the jus out of that pan and we put it in a fat separator and you can see it separated there. We did not inject this pork butt. There's no. so much intramuscular fat in pork. I don't think you have to inject it. And you have this secret weapon right here. So. To me, I can just throw down some of this, some of the, some of the good juice right here, mm -hmm. and we can just kind of mix that around. And this is just going to be—I love the word succulent, moist. It's going to be two good words. And it's just pushing some more of that pork flavor right back into the pool. Yeah, you know? that's the, that, that's yeah, the that. that's the fat that's the flavor that we we cooked out a little bit, and the butter and the brown sugar and the hot honey hog. I mean, All you can't there. beat it. So, which brings us to tip number two: Anytime I shred or pull meat. I like to do what you're about to do. Yes, sir. We got to hit it with that finishing dust. This is a this is a an ode to competition as well. But this is what I call raw seasoning. So all this other seasoning has cooked down. Now, I mean, whether you can do this on top of ribs, you can do yep. it on whatever you want to do. Mix this in, and then this really gives you a serious pop. Not to mention a big old piece of meat. Obviously, the middle of it was not seasoned. Going back to my prime rib example, I had you yep. know, uh, and so this was a way to get seasoning, raw seasoning on on it. You can put whatever you like. I like to jump in with a hot because it gives you a little pop yep just wakes up those taste buds which, yeah. is, which is nice when you have just a little bit of back end heat okay enough talking Woo! Ooh, i got a big one. Oh, that's delicious and you know and not a bit of barbecue sauce in there if people want to add it they can but that is just a hundred percent good smoked barbecue flavor it's smoky it's got you know, i can totally pick up the flavor from the rub you know just subtle with the the sugar uh and the butter you know just yep. some moisture and a little sweetness it's definitely not hot no even though we no. put a hot rub on, it's not hot at all to be you know, honest and, with you. and the other thing that's interesting when you pull it when it's that warm that au jus already worked itself back into the meat the rub that we just hit it with is soaking back into yeah. the meat um it's just delicious i love it the versatility of pulled pork is amazing well this is an easy one um you guys have to do this if you haven't already 
The recipe is down in the description. We hope you enjoyed this series, but if you just stumbled across this and you haven't checked out the previous videos, um, we did one together on brisket. We did one on beef ribs. These recipes are also going to be on Traeger.com. They're in the Traeger app. I tell everybody, you've got to have the Traeger app. It's loaded with recipes. There. Absolutely. The Traeger recipes are a massive differentiator between Traeger and other brands, in my opinion. The culinary team that works there, second to none. Great free resource for everybody so you guys can check out all this stuff there. Sounds great. And I, I completely agree with you. Traeger.com for this and so many more. It's going to make you a better cook overnight for sure. All right. I'm going to keep eating. We'll see you all next time. Round two.